Okay, we're going to proceed now with uh, basiliary dysentery, what is commonly known as shigellosis. Um, so it's still part of the fecal oral diseases that we're doing under the infectious and vector bone diseases uh, series. So as always, kindly remember to subscribe. So to start us off, we're going to look at what this shigella is or what shigellosis uh, by definition is it's basically an acute bacterial disease of the intestines that is normally characterized by, by inflammation of the intestines and ultimately you have bloody diarrhea okay so it is normally termed as disease of the poor and the crowded communities um, even though nowadays things are changing uh, it is the most important uh, cause of acute bloody diarrhea okay so uh, as we will we'll proceed you'll see we have other disease other fecal diseases like cholera which is case definition basically is acute watery diarrhea now in the case of shigella or bacillary dysentery um, it's normally characterized by acute bloody diarrhea uh, so uh, from the start i want us to know that this one is bacterial okay as opposed to what we've done in um Amoebic dysentery. Amoebic, uh, uh, amoebic dysentery is caused by a protozoa. Okay, a protozoa. It's that's different from bacteria. Uh, okay, so etiology basically, since you've said it's bacterial, the bacteria itself is a uh, is a gram-negative aerobic uh, bacilli, which is non-motile. Um, as you can see, no flagella. So basically no movement, even internal flagella is not there. So they're gram negative. Uh, and as you'll notice that uh, most uh, most of this um, causative organism or bacteria basically that affect the gastrointestinal system are normally gram negative. But obviously there are exceptions in every rule. Uh, so the Shigella species, that normally cause uh, bacillary dysentery. We can look at them from um, four types or four species. So we have Shigella sonei, Shigella dysentriae, Shigella flexineri, and finally Shigella bodhi. However, the first three, uh, that is sonei, dysentriae, and flexineri, are the most common causes of outbreak of uh, out, um, acute bloody diarrhea, which is uh, bacillary dysentery. Uh, so the mode of transmission, similar to most of the other fecal oral uh, uh, diseases, so it's transmitted by the fecal oral route, that is either through flies or contaminated hands, or indirectly through dishes which are poorly washed, or by water which is contaminated. So the shigella multiplying food, which when ingested, normally causes the dysentery. So humans are the only reservoir for this outbreak. Okay, and the incubation period is normally very short. That's why it causes acute disease. So one to four days. Normally within a, a day, you've had food that is normally is, is already con contaminated with um, shigella. You will normally not even finish 24 hours before you start having um, the clinical picture of this dysentery. Okay, so the the four. For the four F's connection basically is to show us basically about how we we'll get this infection, and it's we have flies that will contaminate. We have feces that has uh, this bacteria. Uh, then we have fingers that are uh, dirty and maybe contaminated in food, which is also contaminated. All all of this they are taken orally, or if they contaminate things that are taken orally, like food then we end up having the disease. So you see feces, uh, maybe having, having the bacteria, then flies uh, like step on them, and then the flies end up on food, or fingers, or whichever way, end up touching the feces and touching the food, which I, uh, then ultimately ends up in the mouth. Uh, so how does it cause disease? Uh, basically, once the bacteria, once the bacteria, so you notice first of all, you've not looked at like a life cycle because bacteria, basically we don't look at the life cycle since once you're infected, 
the bacteria doesn't change form whatsoever. So it just just carried from the source and then goes to the site where it's going to cause the disease. So nothing much changes with the form or the, 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 the state of the bacteria. So when the bacteria gets into the intestines, um, that is how we start have, having the disease. So the infection is by ingestion, obviously we get the bacteria in by the ingestion. Then it invades the colonic mucosa, so the mucosal layer of the colon is, in, is invaded. Then you have local spread of infection, and then it causes the death, or it destroys basically the epithelial cells, okay? But one, more, one, one thing that is important, with uh, Shigella is that it produces toxins, which kills the cells. So basically it is not the bacteria itself that destroys the cells, it's that the bacteria produces toxins, okay? And, and, and these toxins are the ones that, uh, that they kill the cells. And this is common mostly for all, for most uh, gram-negative bacteria, okay? They normal, normally produce endotoxins, which uh, now cause the, uh, affect the, 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 the cells. So the mucosal membrane of the colon becomes inflamed and then they start bleeding, okay? And with patches of necrotic membranes uh, being formed. So this normally leads to alteration of the areas of the intestines. So I want you to understand that once you get the bacteria, the bacteria goes and invades the colonic uh, mucosa, okay, then it produces these toxins, the toxins destroy the cells. Mm -hmm. Of the mucosa or the and the the epithelial cells of the uh, of the colon mucosa. So, what is the effect of this uh, pathogenic process? Is just the onset is normally very sudden. Okay, as you realize, maybe compared to things like uh, a maybe dysentery, is that it takes time for the protozoa itself to start causing all these uh, problems because it needs time to start replicating to to, to reproduce and by the bacteria reproduces far much faster so you expect that in um, bacillary dysentery we'll have this thing become the ozone becoming very sudden now because of the release of the endotoxins uh, we normally have fever and then we'll have headache diarrhea and then because of the destruction of the mucosal layer of the end of the epithelium then you have streaks of blood and colic abdominal pains. So uh, normally after a few motions, the diarrhea stops and it is normally followed by very severe pain, abdominal pain. Then you'll have tenesmus. Then the patient um, passes a small amount of purulent mucus and blood. Okay. Yeah. So the toxins produced by the shigella may be absorbed into the bloodstream, resulting in toxemia. And the toxemia is what causes the rapid, the high fevers and the rapid pulse. Okay, so dehydration is also common and dangerous, maybe because of um, uh, um, because of the destruction of the of the colon colonic um, membrane, and then you have loss of uh, loss of fluids, and then you have the dehydration leading to cramps. Okay. Uh, if this persists, you can have a shock secondary to the dehydration. And in infants, because of the tenesmus, you feel like you want they want to pass to live in with this no stool, you can have retro uh, prolapse. And then other things like uh, convulsions can also occur because of the high fever and the toxemia that is building up. Okay, so just to understand the differences between the bacillary and amoebic dysentery, which is very important, is that bacillary dysentery is very acute. So the incubation period is very short. We said like around one to five, one to four days. And then amoebic dysentery takes longer, okay, three weeks. So it's a bit, don't say it's a bit insidious, gradual and, and, and what have you. The fever is common um, in bacillary dys dysentery. And then in amoebic dysentery, it will only occur if we have the protozoa leaking into the blood. So it's only in a complication, okay? Then we have clinical picture where the dysentery, you have lying down dysentery and then you have walking dysentery. This is just to show them the severity. So in bacillary dysentery, the pain or the dysentery itself, will, it will be so much that you cannot basically even walk straight. So you have to like lie down or something to feel better. 
walking dysentery means you can be moving, but you're having some discomfort. Abdominal ten ten tenderness is in the whole abdomen here, most local localized in the sigmoid. And the reason is because what we're releasing here is toxic the toxins which basically will affect most areas and most areas of the of the of the of the colon. As opposed to maybe dysentery, it's basically focused on where exactly the trophozoite is actually uh, causing the ulceration. Then this is very severe, as I think I've explained here. The, the, the tenderness is not very, very severe in this case. Then stool, there's mucus and blood only. Okay, that pus might be present, but mucus and blood only in bacillary dysentery. Then, because the stool is not too much here. In amoebic dysentery, you'll have stool that is has blood and mucus. Okay, so that's a good difference you should be able to pick up. Microscopically, you'll have numerous RBCs, and then you'll have also numerous RBCs clumped together, and also you'll have polymorphs in both cases. Okay, so they are quite different. Also, you can add that bacillary dysentery is caused by a bacteria, okay, of the Shigella species, and then amoebic dysentery is called, caused by protozoa and amoeba histolytica. So we can have more more differences, um, like um, dysentery, the number of motions you might have in a day. Uh, maybe dysentery, which is more severe, have more than 10. The amount of, um, basically, stool you produce here is copious, because we remember in a big dysentery, you will have stool, which has mucus and blood, but here you'll have mostly uh, mucus and blood, so very little amount of stool. This the order of the order of the stool is a bit offensive, orderless because again it's very small, dark red, but in bacillary dysentery it's bright red. Um, and then um, most importantly, you should just know uh, the ones that you've talked about here. So the nature we've said blood and mucus mixed with feces, but here in bacillary dysentery we have very little amount of feces or no feces, but we'll have blood and mucus. Okay, uh, so diagnosis is basically through, um, remember this bacteria, so stool, stool culture uh, for Shigella species, um, and then stool examination, which shows the presence of blood and mucus, and also stool microscopy to show the presence of large numbers of the white blood cells or erythrocytes, but just basically the stool culture will do. Uh, management. So mild bacillary dysentery or shigellosis is self-limiting. Maybe what you need is a bit of rehydration. But when it's severe, it's not something that you need, really need to handle very fast. So um, rehydration is also very important, very, very important. But uh, antibiotics also, we normally give uh, ciprofloxacin orally or nalidixic acid. For the pain, you'll have to do some analgesics like paracetamol, then rehydrate using um, fluids if they can take it orally, okay, um, or IV fluids, depending on the level of um, dehydration you're talking about. Then to reduce the amount or the urge, the tenacity must of passing stool, they can, you can do a loperamide, which can be given to uh, decrease the amount of motility. Then maintaining adequate level of nutrition is also very good. Okay. Now prevention and control is basically the same thing we've been talking about for fecal conditions, uh, safe water supply. Okay. Then we improve personal hygiene, digging of using uh, and using uh, pit latrines, uh, also food hygiene, then health education basically on um, environmental hygiene and also breastfeeding, especially for mothers who have young kids. And also in, in, in public eating places and uh, markets, and boarding schools and camps, it's important also these people are actually, these areas actually inspected uh, to ensure that they are free of the, of, um, the bacteria or the ways that actually it can be propagated. Okay, so thank you very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed and actually you learned something about it. So feel free kindly to uh, subscribe uh, to get more videos.